Like life, Gregorian chant has its ups and its downs. You be Chantax with Mark Emerson Donnelly. Peace and welcome to Chantax, where we discuss Gregorian chant and classical polyphony and how to get you singing it well sooner rather than later. Today we're going to discuss another simple neum called the clevis and how to sing it. But before we get on with that, I've been asked to give a little more info on the podatus. If you were simply listening to the last podcast, that is episode three, you wouldn't have seen the text graphic which had the definition. It said a podatus is in Gregorian chant a neum signifying two sequential notes sung on the same syllable, the second sung higher in pitch than the first. Now, the name podatus comes from the Greek root pod, which refers to the foot. Hence, a foot doctor is called a podiatrist. Also, the, the basic musical rhythm or uh, poetic rhythm is also called a foot. Now, the basic musical rhythmic foot in Gregorian chant is considered to be a single note followed by a higher note. Uh, why it's not the other way around, I don't know. Perhaps the uh, medieval composers who wrote the chant considered music uh, to be uplifting. Therefore, the basic foot moved up rather than down. As with poetry, this is a basic notion or understanding of rhythm. As you get more experienced, I hope that your understanding and performance becomes more nuanced and intentional. That is, your performance comes off as being more thoughtful and prayerful. Okay, one more thing. The podatus is also sometimes called a pass, which means foot in Latin. Now, the name pass is not used that often, but it is used from time to time, so it's good to know. Now on to the clevis. A clevis is the opposite of a podatus. A clevis is a neum of two notes on the same syllable where the second note is lower than the first note. The graphic shows you a few examples. This again is taken from Laus in Ecclesia, Lesson 11. The word clevis is the ablative of clevus. Clevus means slope. So clevis was, would mean with slope. So I guess the idea is that you're singing with sloping, and in this case, sloping down. Um, some have also said it comes from the Old English uh, word cleaven, which means to split. We get the word cleaver from cleaven uh, also. One way that I used to remember the name of the clevis was to think of the neum as if it was kind of like a uh, short black sausage, something like this. And that when, uh, if you cut through it with a cleaver, if you cleaved it, you cut through, but didn't cut it all the way through, so the casing was still there, you had something like this. So it would go like this, you cleaved it, it went down like that. And that's what gave you the two notes, okay? I don't know how sound that etymology is, but it certainly helped me remember the name. So here's the passage from Laus and Ecclesia on the clevis. This is from lesson 11. The clevis is a descending neum. Thus, it more readily expresses a falling a certain repose. 
And in fact, it often concludes an incise or a member of a phrase. An incise is a part of the chant that's set off by two, uh, two bar lines, especially when it is marked with an epizema or is dotted. And again, you'll see that in the graphic. There's three examples of the cleaves without uh, any extra notation or expressive marks. And then you have the fourth one with the epizema on the first note. Now you can get it on two notes. I'll have an example where it's over both notes later on. Uh, and then you can also get it dotted. Okay. Consequently, one might well be inclined to treat the clevis exactly like the podatus, with the first note stressed and the second lighter. Thus one would risk instinctively shortening the second note by sliding over it to the next note. So you would sing it something like dee 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 dee. Uh, you don't want to do that. Um, uh, for that matter, going on in the text, this danger is encountered in executing all descending neumes, and we'll find that later on. But it would be just as deplorable to lean on the second lower note, even though rhythmically it is situated on the rise. That means it's, it's going to be part, since it's the two beat, it's going to be part of the alam, moving into the next uh, uh, rhythmic uh, musical foot. Now, as uh, the text says, there's a certain equality between the notes. I think it uh, says that here. Yes, the cleavis is thus a neum that requires a certain regularity in its lightness, a certain equality between the two notes. Now, if you keep that equality what naturally happens is the second note, without you trying to sing it lighter, will be lighter. Okay, that's simply because it's at a lower pitch. So, if we were to sing these notes, which are in Laos and Ecclesia, uh, in Lesson 11, it would be Mi Ri, Mi Ri, Do La. So you see, they're all quite even. I'm trying to keep them even, but the second one will have a, a lighterness to it simply because it's lower. So if I change the, the uh, put it on a single syllable. Okay, so, and then if we have the one with the horizontal epizema, uh, the second note shares in the, uh, the warmth, uh, as it says here in the text, not only the first note, but also the second, so that the warmth is distributed equally on the two notes. But the second note will necessarily be somewhat lighter. Re, do, mi. So there's a, a warmth there. And then, of course, with the, hor with the uh, dotted note, we get do, ti, e, e. And if that's concluding a phrase, then of course it will be lighter. Here's a great example, which I hope will show the intrinsic character of the cleavis. That is that kind of breadth, kind of a broadness over the two notes as they go down. Uh, if you can sing this well, this will set your chanting apart from many scholars and choirs that simply sing the cleavis as two pitches, the second one lower than the first, but not with any particular expression that is in the neum itself. This is from the communion for the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. This is Tolite Hostias. And in the fourth incise, there are several 
Cleves. One, two, three, four, five. Five out of the seven neumes are Cleves. And not only that, but the second Cleves has a horizontal epizema over both notes. And then the third, fourth, and fifth Cleves have a horizontal epizema over the first note. Now, just simply looking at it without considering the words, if we, there were no epizemas, we would sing Adorate Dominum. I'll try and sing that even better. Adorate Dominum. But we have not only horizontal epizemas now, but if we consider the text, Adorate Dominum, adore the Lord. Now, instead of just simply having something that's, we try to round out and make, give some breadth to and warm up, now we have something that gives us a little more profoundness. Adorate Dominum. So it, it quite markedly slows down the, uh, the chant. Now the way most people would sing that would be Adorate Dominum. And I've heard it sung like that many times. In fact, I probably sang it like that uh, many years ago. But the, the fact that you have the horizontal epizema over the first note, and knowing that that affects both notes uh, uh, of the cleves, and the cleves already has kind of an evenness of expression, then instead of the adorate dominum, you have adorate dominum. And then when you consider the next phrase, in his holy inner court, we see that uh, there are no cleaves at all, and there are no horizontal epizemas at all. There's no, there's no uh, indication that you add extra expression to any particular note or syllable. So, so what does that mean? Well, it could mean that we've, what we've done is we've, we've looked at, we, we've considered, or we've been told by the imperative, adore the Lord. Well, where? Where are we going to do this? Oh, in his holy inner courts. Well, let's go there. So the chant quickens up. In aula sancta So right after the spreading out, the broadening, the, the um, warm adorate dominum, and then let's go, let's get there. Adorate Dominum in Aula Sancta Eus. It reminds me of the Letatu Suminisque Dicta Sunt Miki. I rejoiced when it was said to me, let us go unto the uh, house of the Lord. Anyway, that's what's there in the chant. So, that's it for today. Remember, the cleavis is sung with a breath. Don't rush it. 
and definitely don't rush the second note. Uh, as Dom Gajard says, uh, don't even hesitate to enlarge it to such a degree that you actually double the note. I would say be careful about doing that, but don't be afraid to. Dom de Roquette says the same thing. Okay? Anyway, please consider supporting us at lifefunder.com slash mdonnellymusic. This will help keep these podcasts going and give me time to compose. And on that note, if you'd like to commission a work for a special mass or occasion, or have me come and work with your choir for a weekend, please contact me at mark at vocalart.org. Um, on the next few episodes of Chant Hacks, we'll be dealing with the rules of style. But before that, I have another Organum Novi Mundi for you. This one on the Regina Chaley. Uh, so you can sing it for the rest of Eastertide. Till then, I'm Mark Emerson Donnelly. God bless. Amen. Amen.